Do you ever eat breakfast for dinner? I'm curious. Uh, you know, the foods like uh, eggs and bacon and pancakes and waffles. Do you ever eat those for dinner or do you only reserve those for the morning time? I really want to know. So welcome. My name is Scott. This is my YouTube channel, Static Camper Van. And tonight I'm thinking about what I want for dinner. Uh, it is a cold and rainy day out. You can probably hear a little pitter patter of rain dancing on the top of my van roof. And I don't really want to be outside in the rain. I don't want to be outside in the chilly. So I'm inside sitting next to my heater here. And uh, I'm just thinking about what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. And I think it's going to be breakfast because I just don't have any trouble eating breakfast type foods for dinner. And since I have them and I don't want to go out and get anything else, breakfast is going to be dinner for me tonight. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to have any pancakes or waffles, although that would be fantastic. I would really enjoy some pancakes or waffles, either one. I like them both, to be quite honest. Maybe prefer waffles, but uh, I don't have a waffle maker and I really don't want to go through the mess of making pancakes. Uh, but I am going to splurge on something here. I've been craving bacon. Now, I have been staying away from most pork products for the last couple of years. Uh, just have not felt like I should be eating pork uh, for many different reasons, but I do get a craving for it once in a while. And so I, as I say, I splurged and bought some really decent bacon here, but this is not regular bacon. These are uh, bacon bits and pieces and ends uh, pieces that are just put in a big pack here. I think it's a one pound bag. Uh, this was less than $4 and uh, it's from a small uh, pork company. Uh, one that I've bought from before in the past, although I've just been staying away from pork, as I said, uh, but it looked good. And this is the uncured kind of bacon. So it's, um, I think a better quality bacon, although I wouldn't argue uh, with you if you're going to try to tell me to stay away from pork. Uh, I would probably agree with you. But as I said, I have a little bit of a craving for some. So I figured this was probably the best of the best that I could pick. And I, I only ever eat the uncured kind anyway. Um, but I've been looking for some of uh, this type, which is just the end pieces. I think that they can grind them up and do other things with them, like put them in the sausage and things like that. But uh, it's kind of cool to find just a pack of just end pieces like this. Keeps the price down, although you get a bunch of pieces of bacon that are not really uniform. So it's uh, maybe not the easiest thing to cook off. But uh, I don't care about that. I was happy to find a deal. So I'm going to cook these up here. And let me get my stove on and uh, I, I'm just going to cook these on my uh, my stove top. And I just have a uh, let's get another light on here. I just have a uh, skillet, heavy skillet. I'm going to cook these on. This is a uh, carbon steel uh, pan, which I think works really well for cooking any kind of meat. And actually, let me just wash my hands up really quick because I was just touching bacon. So before I touch anything else, I'm just going to give myself a quick wash. Okay, get the stove fired up here. I know there's several different ways of cooking bacon. Everybody has their own preferred method. Uh, before I lived in a van, I always cooked my bacon on a cookie sheet in the oven. That was the way I always did it. Uh, but don't have a choice here. Uh, but I do think having a nice heavy pan is, is definitely the way to go. I do like to preheat my pan a little bit. So I'm going to do that now. And then I'll try to pick out some of these pieces here because since they're all different kind of shapes and sizes, I'm going to try to pick out some that are kind of all the same size so that they all kind of cook evenly. Although I bought a number of these packs of end pieces before and sometimes that can get a little bit tough trying to get just uh, all the same size out of here. So we'll, we'll see how we do with this with this brand and this pack. 
So this is interesting. This pack here has kind of regular pieces of bacon in it. They're really just uh, like a normal shaped piece of bacon that you'd normally see in a regular pack. But it did have some smaller pieces, so I just picked out a couple of the longer pieces here. And they look great. They're nice and thick cuts. Uh, it smells really good. So I'm going to let that brown up a little bit, get a little crispy, because that's how I like mine. And then I'm going to need some eggs, too, so I can get to prepping a few other things while this is cooking. It's been raining on and off all day today, and in the evening, you know, maybe about six o'clock or so, or so, maybe a little before, uh, it just started raining nonstop. It looks like it's going to rain all night long. At least that's what the forecast is saying, but I have not been trusting the forecast too much lately. It's uh, not been proven to be very accurate, uh, but we have been getting a lot of rain here uh, up around Seattle, and so much so I have been a little bit uh, worried about power. Uh, I live on solar power only, and uh, in weather like this, it's a little bit tough. Now, I, I did reset my refrigerator, so it's running just as a fridge. It, I normally have it set partially as a freezer and partially as a fridge, but uh, I pulled out the little divider that it has for the freezer section. I've been running it just as a big fridge, which is nice. I've got lots of space in here for things. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it does keep the power down, uh, but it only does so well uh, on such cloudy days like it is right now. It's just uh, really, really cloudy, and so um, I am getting a little bit worried about power, and that's, uh, I guess, to be expected here in the state of Seattle. Well, with my stove going and my heater going, it's getting to be quite warm in here, so I'm going to turn my heater off. Save on fuel. I don't need to be sweating here. It's really not that chilly out today. Um, I think the low is going to be down in the low 40s, so that's not very cold, really. Uh, so I'm not going to be running this all night, but I was cold today. I was out and about earlier today doing some errands and things, and... Um, it was windy, really windy, and so it uh, just wasn't comfortable, even though it wasn't very cold. Uh, it just wasn't very comfortable. And I think I've done a poor job on my bacon. I've overcooked some of it. Oh, well. <laughs> It'll still taste good. Let's see. Let's get it out of the pan here. Just drain it off a little bit on some paper towel. Yeah, see that one there got a little bit toasty, but um, I think I'm just out of practice cooking bacon in a pan or cooking bacon altogether. I just have not been eating it at all. So no surprise there that I'm out of practice. Okay, so I've cleaned out the pan just a little bit and I've dropped the heat down and I'm gonna toast off some bread just quickly. I'll just toast off one side of each of these slices of bread just to give them a little more flavor. I normally buy uh, sourdough bread. It's my favorite bread and I digest it well and it's just, uh, I think, a healthier type bread. But when I went into the store to buy sourdough, they were sold out. Uh, there's a little tiny company uh, called Panda Amore, uh, maybe Pane de, de Amore. I'm not really sure. That's uh, probably French and I don't speak French. Uh, but they had this one, uh, just some sandwich bread, and I thought, well, I need something to eat. I've uh, not been too good on my meals lately. I've uh, been kind of skipping some here and there, and I thought better to have something to eat than nothing. And so I bought it. It's okay bread, uh, but I think it needs just a little bit of extra help to make it taste better. It's just a white bread, white sandwich bread. Uh, next time, I'll search out some sourdough. All right, that's toasting up nice. Just get the other side toasted off, and then I can cook off the eggs. 
Okay, I think this toast is ready. Let me get this out of here and add a little butter to my pan here. There's still a little bit of uh, bacon grease in the pan, so I don't have a whole lot of butter. Oh, that pan is hot. Very hot, which is good. For a long time, when I first started van life, I would not pre-beat my eggs into a little bowl like I just did here because I didn't want to dirty up a second bowl. And from time to time, people tell me that I am wasting a bowl and getting it dirty, having another thing to clean. And I tell them, so what? Uh, <laughs> I really don't like eggs when they come out of a pan, when you scramble them straight in a pan. I just really don't like it. Uh, it's one of the things I learned years ago. And I thought, you know, just because I'm living in a van doesn't mean that I shouldn't have the food the way I want it to be. So I stopped doing that. I uh, did, did it for a few months where I just cracked the eggs straight into the pan and was not ever happy with them. And I was eating a lot of eggs at the time. Uh, and so it just kind of occurred to me that, hey, if, if you're making something for yourself, just make it the way you want to make it. Don't worry about washing another bowl up. One more utensil uh, to, the, to the list is not really anything. So ever since I came to that realization, I have just not worried about dirtying up another bowl because what difference does it make as long as I like it better this way? Right? And probably a few of you are saying, no, not right. Don't dirty up another bowl, even after I said all that. <laughs> That's a nice thing, though, is uh, when you're the cook in your own kitchen, you just do things the way you want to do them. I, I worked in a restaurant for 10 years, and uh, I can tell you one thing. Chef would have never let us crack eggs directly into a pan first. That would not have gone down well. Uh, it would not have gone, gotten away with that at all. So I know at least one person would agree with me here. And I think highly of Chef, even, even after all these years. So uh, as long as I like it, and I know she's uh, going to agree with me, that's enough people for me on my side. This is about a nine and a half inch pan, and three eggs is kind of pushing it a little bit. So I wanted the extra food. So I uh, put them in here, but um, two eggs is probably easier with this size of pan. So it's not cooking quite as good and is not quite as easy as uh, I would like to flip. But as I say, I need the food. So three eggs it is, and I'll, I'll just deal with it. They're not doing too bad. Uh, you wouldn't know it from... Uh, what I'm cooking here tonight, but I'm actually a pretty decent cook, even though I did uh, kind of overcook the eggs. I definitely overcooked the bacon a little bit, but that's what happens from time to time. Uh, let's see, I need a little hot sauce. Where's the good stuff? Here's the good stuff. So I've got some Yellow Bird Serrano hot sauce, which I really like with um, anything pork I think it just goes really well together. Uh, this stuff is really good on pepperoni pizza, by the way. If you ever have some of this and you're enjoying a pepperoni pizza, uh, it's just incredible. Okay. So I got a little sticking on my pan there, but that's not a big problem. That'll clean up. And I thought about putting some... I'm going to go fairly heavy with the hot sauce here. Uh, I thought about putting some uh, cheese on this as well, but I decided that I didn't want to hide away the uh, bacon flavor, so I thought the cheese might just make the bacon not stand out. So this is, this is what we're doing here. A little more hot sauce on top. And I think that looks pretty darn good for a quick little 
I was, I was almost going to say breakfast sandwich, but this is not a breakfast sandwich, is it? This is a dinner sandwich. Okay, well, one thing I've learned in the past is not to let your carbon steel pan sit. You want to just clean it immediately, but I can't just do that and leave the sandwich sitting. I got to get into this thing. Uh, this bacon, I just took a little piece of the bacon and tried it on its own. Oh my goodness, it's good. I wished I would have bought another pack of that, being that the price was right on it. But let's give this a try all together. Hmm. See, who says you can't have breakfast for dinner? This is fantastic. All right, that pan cleaned up really nice and easily. Uh, probably because I cooked some bacon in it earlier. Uh, when I first bought this carbon steel pan, I really fretted about trying to keep the seasoning on it. And what I've learned over the uh, time that I've had this, how long have I had this? Well over a year anyway, uh, maybe a couple. Uh, the one thing I've learned is that you really don't have to worry about seasoning uh, with carbon steel pans. Uh, if you're cooking something with some fat in it once in a while, it basically reseasons it as you cook. So bacon's a great thing to cook, but burgers are another thing that would reseason it. Um, I do eat a lot of quesadillas and grilled cheese sandwiches, essentially the same thing, but um, those reseason the pan, whether you're cooking your quesadilla in oil or your grilled cheese sandwich and butter, which is what I, how I do them. Uh, those, those both reseason the pan. So it's, it's just not been an, an, an issue at all keeping that pan seasoned. It's just been a great pan. And the nice thing is uh, I used to buy at least one pan a year if it was Teflon with this pan. I've had it now for quite some time and it, uh, it really is going to outlive me. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually happy to say that. Uh, you know, not, not that I'm saying I'm happy to be leaving, but I'm just happy to not have to buy another pan again. I just have a really good solid pan that I don't have to worry about and that I don't have to keep replacing uh, at least once a year, but usually two or three times a year with those nonstick pans. Really good. Uh, anyway, I've got some more dishes to finish up. Well, I'm feeling like having a little coffee right now, but of course, when do I not feel like having coffee? And it's not really that late yet, so I'll be up for a while, so I might as well just uh, have a cup. I've not been drinking a whole lot of coffee lately, believe it or not. Um, and I do have some of my favorite coffee. Somebody told me the other day, well, you, you have a lot of favorite coffees, and I guess that's true. I think I just say that uh, a lot, but to be clear, uh, I do have a definite number one and number two coffee, which is uh, this one, uh, Groundwork Ethiopian. This is my absolute number one favorite coffee, bar none. Uh, don't even have to think about it. I don't buy this very often because it's pricey being that it's organic and uh, it's a really high quality coffee. So I, I don't buy it very often, but uh, when I do, I really enjoy it. Maybe that's why I enjoy it so much because I just don't buy it all the time. But it's really special. Uh, you know, coffee started in Ethiopia, they think. Uh, so co coffee's, you know, birthplaces in Ethiopia. So you would think that that would be maybe why Ethiopian coffee is so good. Uh, this particular one, though, from Groundwork is just more spectacular than any of the other uh, companies' uh, kinds of Ethiopian coffee that I've tried. So that's why it's my favorite. Uh, my second favorite coffee, since we're talking about that, uh, is a grocery store coffee, which I can only get around the Seattle area. So I have been drinking quite a bit of it lately, too. Uh, it's from a grocery store called Metropolitan Market, and it's their house blend of coffee, and it's really good. And I put it as number two, although if you're talking about 
the level of how I like it between this one being number one, this groundwork Ethiopian being number one. This would be like uh, the Empire State Building. And then my second favorite would be like, you know, a three-story building. Just to give you a little idea of how much I like this coffee. Uh, that's not to say I, that I'm taking away from that other coffee. It's fantastic. And it's probably the best deal of a really high quality coffee uh, that you can find anywhere. It's just a fantastic coffee. So if, if you are around Seattle, you can uh, find yourself a metropolitan market. They're, they're located all around uh, Seattle and uh, go in and try some and see if you agree with me. Uh, and if you want to try some groundwork Ethiopian, uh, you should probably be on the West Coast because this is a small company that uh, is roasted in Portland, Oregon, and in Los Angeles, California. So uh, not quite as easy to find either. But I think that's why I always have a big list of favorite coffees is because wherever I am, I try to drink what's local. This is not necessarily local, although it was roasted in Portland. It's not that far away from Seattle. But um, I do try to drink local coffee where I am. So that's a big list of coffees as I travel around quite a bit. I better get to grinding coffee here because the kettle's going to be done any second now. Well, believe it or not, I have not been drinking all that much coffee lately. Uh, at least the last two, three weeks, I've really cut down on my coffee. There's been several days I haven't had a cup at all. And if I have been drinking coffee, it's been usually a cup a day. It might be in the morning, it might be in the evening. Uh, but I've uh, really been only drinking one cup once in a while, more than one cup. But um, yeah, I, I just have not been feeling good. And so I just have not felt like drinking coffee. Um, I've not been eating all that well either. And so that was kind of the dilemma tonight was what to do for dinner because I just didn't really feel like eating a whole lot. Although once I got into that sandwich, everything changed. That was just an explosion of fantastic flavors. Take just a few simple ingredients and you put them together and they become more than the sum of their parts sometimes. And that's what happened with that sandwich. Uh, just incredible. Fantastic. I might uh, might actually eat one of those uh, or make another one one of those for breakfast tomorrow. Um, even though it's uh, it's, uh, it's a dinner sandwich, I think, right? Isn't that what we figured out? But uh, <laughs> it was just really tasty. So I, I always add a little bit of hot water to my cup just to warm up my mug a little bit. And then while I'm waiting for the coffee to brew, that'll just ensure that I have a nice, really hot mug to start with. One of those little important things to do. I think uh, that's one of the things that I learned working for a world-class chef is that one of the things is you don't need to do a whole lot to ingredients if you just buy a few simple high quality ingredients do very little to them uh, you end up with a really good dish at the end and uh, it's kind of the same here with coffee making i think uh, it's just what i've learned from her is everything is is in the details of how you do things uh, as well as the uh, the quality of of them. So, you know, you can buy really good quality coffee, but if you don't follow a few basic steps, uh, grinding it correctly, uh, timing the brew correctly, um, brewing it into a cold mug, I would add to that too. Although maybe I'm just being a little particular about that, but all of those things matter in the end. So, I think my time in the restaurant really served me well. Uh, even though that was years ago, and I'm afraid to say I've probably forgotten a lot of what I was taught, and I've certainly lost a lot of the skill that I, I've uh, had. I, in fact, I, uh, I was making some soup for a friend of mine a few days ago, and I actually cut my, my thumb while I was chopping up vegetables for the soup, and I thought, <clears throat> this is crazy. All those years that I worked in the kitchen, and we hardly ever cut ourselves. It was just, it was almost unheard of that we'd ever cut ourselves and then I 
nick my thumb. Silly. Uh, that doesn't mean I need to go back to work in the kitchen as a refresher, though. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not really sure if any of what I just said made sense, but hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, or maybe you just tuned me out and focused on the raindrops because uh, the rain does sound pretty nice right now. And please don't worry that I say that I'm not feeling good. Uh, I do know why I'm not feeling well, but I'm not quite sure what to do about it. Um, the weather is really affecting me, and I did want to stay up here in the Pacific Northwest. I really enjoy the weather here, uh, the rain, uh, the cooler temperatures. If I get a little bit too cold, I just turn my heater on, um, and at times, uh, I've got to turn it off like I did just now because it keeps me super warm, uh, sometimes too warm. Like tonight, I won't need to use it uh, to sleep. It's not going to be that chilly tonight, but I've got it. It keeps me warm and comfortable, and I do really enjoy being out uh, in this environment, in this type of weather. Uh, it's just really nice here. I think the Seattle area is prettier uh, with some rain and some clouds and some fog. So I'm enjoying being back here, but I do notice that when there's a quick change in uh, the barometric pressure, then I do feel really poorly. Uh, and then that affects kind of everything else. It affects my eating and uh, doesn't affect my sleep, uh, thankfully. I've been sleeping great uh, still, no matter what. But um, yeah, I just have not been eating as well as I should or enjoying coffee the way I should. Uh, and it's just it's just part of being up here. Uh, I'm here where I want to be, but sometimes my my old body just doesn't like the uh, the change in the quick change in barometric pressure. So uh, that seems to be an issue. So I don't know if that's going to affect uh, me going forward too much more. I felt pretty good the last couple of days, but I had a couple of days where I was just down uh, in bed most of the day and uh, it, you know it's not fun then uh, and that's what I say it kind of affects everything else um, but other than that this is a great place to be you know you listen to the rain the rain is pretty to look at I'd show you what it looks like but now that the time has changed uh, it gets dark at about 4:30 here so uh, it's uh, It's been pitch black outside for hours now. Uh, that's the other little downside that I've not liked. Uh, not exactly weather, but um, just don't know why we keep doing this time change thing. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I'm sure people will have their reasons on why it's done, uh, but I, I don't think it should be a practice anymore. And in fact, Washington State has petitioned the federal government to let them stop doing the daylight savings time. Uh, Arizona, I know, doesn't participate in daylight savings time, so uh, I wish that they would get their wish so that I didn't have to deal with it either. Uh, I am up here in one of my favorite places to be, but, you know, one of the, one of the other little downsides there. No place is perfect, is it? No place is perfect. Well, I think I'm about ready to wrap this up today here. Just uh, keep it a simple video. A little bit of pitter-patter of rain is really what this video is about. Um, although that bacon was pretty spectacular and turned out to be a pretty decent little uh, breakfast dinner sandwich. So uh, do keep those end cuts of bacon in mind if you can find them. They're a really good deal, I think. I'm sure I'll be looking for them again in the future. In fact, I might just stop back at the store that I bought those and see if I can find another pack before I leave this area. That would be a good idea for me to do that. Uh, anyway, uh, like I said, just a simple short one here tonight. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.